guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I thought we'd do kind of a casual video. I have picked through some of the things that I had just sitting on my desk from my end of your favorites video, both drugstore and high end. Thought we could put on some of those today. And I also have a new eyeshadow palette here that I picked up right before Christmas time and it knocked my socks off. So I wanted to use it with you guys. I also found a couple of things that I forgot to mention in my year and favorites video. So we're gonna put those on as well, talk about them a bit and just kind of chat. Should be fun. Before we get into it though, special welcome if you are a new visitor here. Thank you for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope you'll consider subscribing before you leave. And with that said, we do have a lot to put on, so let's get right to it. Okay, let's put on some makeup. First things first, I have my Flower Beauty Priming Whip here. I don't use this on camera very often, and I use it a ton in my everyday life, so I thought we would use this together today. I absolutely love it. It's one of my very favorites, as I mentioned in my drugstore video, and I'm just about out of mine. I had probably better pick it up soon. All right, let's add a little bit of foundation. So I have not mentioned this for a while and it is such a great CC cream. It's the e.l.f. Camo CC cream. I feel like it hasn't gotten a lot of attention for me since last year. I pulled this back out recently and used it and was reminded of why I really love this stuff. I just, I've been trying out a lot of foundations this year and it's been neglected. It's actually a really good shade match for me. It's a little bit on the yellow side, but once it's blended in, I don't mind having a foundation that has more of a yellow tint to it because it kind of calms some of the redness in my skin. And I do have a bit more olive in my skin than like peachy or pink tones. I, don't, I never know if that's cool or warm. Honestly, I think it depends on the brand. Sometimes I feel like it's backwards, but it usually ends up matching me a little bit better and calming down some of my redness. And it doesn't end up going pink or peach on me or oxidizing and turning kind of a weird color. You guys ever have that problem with foundations where once you put them on and they kind of dry down, like the undertone just gets really bizarre. This stuff is great though. It has fantastic coverage. By the way, I am using Light 240W. Pretty sure this has a pretty good shade range too. Just gonna take a tiny bit of what's left down kind of under my chin and along the side of my ears and my neck. Okay, before we move into concealer, I just wanna take a damp sponge. It's just a clean, damp, sponge from wet n wild i kind of feel like i should have mentioned this sponge in my drugstore video i wasn't really thinking of non-makeup products like tools but if i was this is definitely something i would mention because i love this sponge it's kind of replaced all my other sponges there are some i have from bh cosmetics a l'oreal one that i really love even I actually don't like the Real Techniques as much as I used to. I feel like they kind of changed a bit over the years or maybe my preferences changed, but I've come to like this shape. I like the pointy, like just the traditional shape rather than kind of the hourglass looking ones. I like the pointier edge on these ones because I feel like they work better for the under eye area. So this one has the perfect shape. It's a really good texture and it's super affordable. Big fan of it. Anyways, I'm just using it to kind of blend out the foundation that tends to gather around my hairline, especially after I dye my roots, which I did just recently touch up my roots so they're a little bit dark. So I need to make sure that I don't have foundation sitting on top of my hair and looking funny. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's add some concealer. I'm gonna use my Conceal and Perfect from Milani. This one right here is shade 115. This one I like for my eyelids. This one is a little bit dry and old. I am squeezing the last tiny bit out of the bottle here. By the way, I just discovered this concealer has an interesting kind of chemically scent to it that reminds me a lot of the smell of the Healthy Foundation from Physicians Formula. You guys remember that foundation? It smells a little bit sweet, kind of like a chemical maple syrup, which sounds awful. It's not bad. I mean, it doesn't bother me, but it's just kind of a strange scent. So I'm going to let that sit for a sec. And then I'm going to go to shade 130. This one's a little bit darker. And this one we're going to add on just some of my little patches of discoloration. This one's actually a little bit dark for me. So I might even go in and add a little bit more of the other shade. I'm just barely, I'm barely putting any of this down. I know it looks like I'm putting it all over, but I just wanna take a little bit of this for these areas in the center to kind of mix with that shade so it's not too dark. Let's go a little bit on, on my nose. My nose is always red. I see how that's kind of drying down a little bit darker. And actually, I'm gonna leave that one dark because that's that spot that I really struggle to cover. We're gonna blend that in with the sponge that I just used. 
starting on the perimeter and then we'll move to the eyelids. So how is everyone's holiday, Christmas time? Did you guys have a good one? Was it relaxing? I hope that you did. Mine was amazing. It was so great. I, I kind of feel bad because I, I think I went the longest time between video postings that I've ever gone. I think I went like six, maybe seven days without posting a video, which was not intentional, but I bit off a little bit more than I could chew for Christmas this year. And that I made all of my kids a scrapbook this year. I did the same thing like four years ago. I, I have intentions to always keep up on printing out their pictures and making a scrapbook. By the way, a former version of myself was really into scrapbooking. I'm not as much anymore, mostly because I just don't have the time to do it anymore. But once in a while I like to do it and my kids loved the scrapbooks I gave them four years ago so I wanted to do it again this year. So that meant I spent a lot of time organizing pictures, printing out pictures for my oldest son who is in his first year of college. So we've had him home for the holidays, which by the way, oh, has been such a dream. Like it's so nice to have everybody home together. I'm sure any of you that have had kids that have gone away for college or moved away for a bit and come back is just understands. Like I now understand what that feels like. It's like the best thing ever to have them home. Anyways, so his scrapbook, I ended up making a kind of like a documentation of his senior year baseball season. So I literally printed off all the pictures, all the statistics. I actually went back to the Game Changer, which is like a, it's an app that you use to track stats and like game details. And I printed all of them off for his whole season. So, I mean, it was like, it was a very time intensive process, but something that I know he is really happy to have documented. Anyway, so that's what, that was my big gift to my kids for Christmas. And by big, I mean very time consuming gift that they don't understand how much time went into creating those, but it was totally worth it though. They really enjoyed them. And they're one of those things that I know that they, it's not just like a toy that they're gonna forget about in six months. They'll appreciate it more in 10 years than they do right now. But I'm sorry that you guys got the short end of that stick. Hopefully I'll be able to get things back to normal, my upload schedule more back to normal as we move into the new year. All right, so there's concealer. Let's add a little bit of powder. Why don't we take my, what is this called? <laughs> I'm still recovering from the sleepless nights prior to Christmas. The RCMA No Color Powder. Let's take a little bit of this and pop on my eyelids first before those start to crease. And I just am using kind of, I shake it up before I open it and then just use what's in the the McCormick lid. And I'm just taking what's left and kind of spreading it all over. There's very little powder left on here. For bronzer, I'm gonna take this. This is this was not mentioned in either of my videos. This is the Merit bronzer in the shade Clay. Now I am still kind of learning this product and gathering my thoughts on it. I actually don't like it as much with a brush alone, which is typically how I put on my cream bronzers. This does work better, just drawn directly, ooh, whoops, onto the skin and then blend it out, which I just recently discovered. So I'm still kind of learning how to use this product. I really like it, but I haven't quite discovered how I like to use this yet. So we're just gonna draw it around the perimeter and then I'm gonna take a brush. We'll take this one from Sydney Grace and just blend out the edges. This is probably one of the creamiest bronzers that I own. If you have really, really dry skin or you don't like a cream bronzer that's too thick or too sticky, you might like this one a little bit better. It's a little bit thinner, but it's very, very easy to blend. Do you guys do the bronzer thing under your chin? Nine times out of 10, I don't. Once in a while, I'll do it. I don't even know why, just because. <laughs> To do anything i don't really know bronzer's all done let's add some blush next we're gonna take my glow play blush in blush please this one i just like to take my blush brush well this is my alter ego number four that i use with all my cream blushes and i just kind of bounce it in there and then i just tap it right onto my cheeks this blush is pretty sheer so i don't need to go onto the back of my hand first when i'm working with something more pigmented i'll do that but this one this is just a really easy blush to use it's easy to blend out and sheer out if you need to. Beautiful color. Look at that color. That's just like the perfect goes with anything. I would say if you have like medium to fair skin, probably would work great for you. We can go around the edges with my sponge. I actually like going over, I think I've said this before, but in case you forgot or new hair, 
I always like to go a little heavier with my blush and then go in and kind of press it into the skin and blend around the edges just to get it to really sink in rather than going more light and then looking like I don't have blush, blush on later on. Let's add some highlighter. We're gonna take my Spotlight palette from BH Cosmetics, this grimy, grimy, well-loved thing. By the way, I checked yesterday, I think, when I posted my last video and this thing was on sale for $9 on the BH Cosmetics website. So, man, that is a steal. I would recommend this for the full price, which I think is like 18. So I'm just kind of taking a mix of these four right here. I just kind of mix them together and then press it into my highlighter brush. I'll just start like on the center of my nose. I run a little bit on my cupid's bow and my actual lips. See how intense this is. It is pretty intense, but I love it. I love an intense highlighter. Even though I'm pretty sure I probably look better with a more natural highlighter, I just like shiny things. And again, kind of same thing with the blush. If you feel like you go a little bit heavy handed or maybe it's a little bit much, you can always just take your sponge and kind of press it in to your skin just to remove any excess and get it to sit a little bit better on your skin or to soften it a little bit. Let's do my brows next. I'm gonna take my e.l.f. Shape and Stay Brow Wax. This is kind of the routine I've been doing for the last couple of weeks. As I've been in a bit more of a hurry, I just throw this in, take my spoolie, brush them upright. Then we're gonna take my Uoma One and Done. This is the pencil and the brow gel. This is shade number three. I'm gonna take just the tiniest bit of the actual pencil and run it just very lightly. A little bit sparse on the underside of my brows. So I wanna add just a little bit down there. This one's a little dark, so I don't wanna to go too heavy. And then a tiny bit through my arch where I'm also a little bit sparse. So I'm not drawing this everywhere because we are gonna use the gel, which is also a little bit dark. Brush that through, which kind of blends it out, softens it a bit. And then we're gonna take the gel. So this is the shade number three, which is pretty dark on me. I like to take some of the excess and kind of roll it off on the edge of the... And I'll just lightly start feathering that through. Then I go over to my clean spoolie. Brush it through. Did I just say that I do this because it's fast? I feel like it is fast when I'm not filming. For some reason, I feel like this is not going very fast. I just love the more feathery look that this gives my brows. All right, I think that's gonna do it for the brows. How do they look? A little bit dark, that's okay. Now let's jump over to the eyeshadow palette that I'm very excited about. So I placed an order right before Christmas time. I was ordering a couple things from Ulta for my sister for her Christmas gift. And I ordered her a couple of ColourPop palettes because they happened to be on sale. I added a couple for myself and one of them was this palette right here. It's called the Fill and Bubbly palette. I think this one's been out for quite a while. I just have not tried many new ColourPop palettes this year. But man, you guys, I have only had this thing for two weeks and I have used it so many times and I have to say this palette might look plain and simple but it is gorgeous. It is the perfect Mandy palette. I mean I have perfect transition shades in here, a nice deep dark chocolatey brown for the outer corner and some of the prettiest lid shades that I've seen in the ColourPop palette in a while. So I will insert a couple of swatches of this palette for you guys right here. I love the shimmers in this. These four shades right here are beautiful. Any one of them make the perfect lid shimmer for me. You guys know I love something kind of bright, kind of sparkly and all of these are exactly that. So we're going to use this today. Let's start off with, let's see, let's go with this kind of pinky peach shade right here first. I'm gonna take that on my refer number 16 brush. And I'm just gonna throw that into the crease. It's also a really quick and easy palette. This is definitely a palette for those of you that like very neutral looks, but don't mind a little bit of sparkle on the lid. Nothing in here is overly bold or dark. It's very kind of, it's kind of basic, but in a very pretty way. So I'm just slowly building this up. Really pretty, perfect transition shade. We're gonna darken that up a little bit with the shade right below it. Same brush, I'm just gonna dip the very tip into that shade and run it through this outer corner right here. By the way, I also picked up two other palettes from 
palettes from ColourPop in that same order. The Lust for Dusk. This has been on my wish list for several months. I think this palette may have even come out in 2021. I finally picked it up. I also picked up the Of Quartz palette. I've swatched this one, but I haven't actually used it yet. It's very gray tone, but there are a lot of pretty taupey shimmers in here. So I'm excited to try this one as well. Let me show you guys the Lust for Dusk. Again, this is probably one you, if you had any interest in, you've probably already tried it. A lot of kind of pinky peaches in here and some cool tones. Very pretty, I've used this one a few times as well. But so far, this one's my favorite. If I had to recommend one, just on what I've tried so far, this thing's a standout. It reminds me a little bit of the Going Coconuts palette, but like a gl more glamorous version of Going Coconuts. All right, let's have a look at these shimmers. I'll just swatch them on my fingers really quickly, especially these three are my favorite. This one's really pretty as well, this gold. So there they are. Look at all of those. Aren't they all lovely? Ooh, what should we do today? Let's do like the cooler tone and then the white one on the inner corner. Why don't we do that? So we're gonna take this one here at the bottom. By the way, guys, ignore my fingernails. I have kind of an embarrassing thing to admit about these press-on nails. These are from Olive in June. I actually got this set last, last year or maybe even the year before. No, I think it was in 2021. And press-on nails, there are some things I really like about them. I like that they stay on for quite a while if you put them on right. But I haven't used them for a while. And this particular set, when I first put them on, if you look closely, some of them are upside down because I put them on backwards. <laughs> How do you do that? How do you not know which way, which side is up, which side is down? I don't remember seeing anything in the instructions, probably because most people just know that. And I got it wrong on half of my fingernails. So some of them have the sparkle at the top and some of them have the sparkle at the bottom. I even pointed it out to my husband. He was like, yeah, I asked him, I was like, can you tell which ones are on right and which ones are not right? And he's like, obviously those ones, you have the thick side on the bottom. And that looks weird. I was like, yeah, I probably should have guessed that, but oh well. So I've been walking around with these bizarre looking nails for a few days. A couple of them are even crooked. Maybe if I practiced more, I could get a handle on the press on nails. But I feel like it's a little bit too glam for a simpleton like me. I'm a little simpler at heart. I'm kind of clumsy and I just feel like, of course I would mess them up and make them look ridiculous. Not to say anything against Olive and June. I think they're probably amazing press on nails and I've even considered buying another pair because I'm determined to get it right because maybe they'd look better on me if I did them the right way in the first place. All right let's add a little bit to the inner corner. So for this I'm going to take this tiny little brush this little brush right here from Sydney Grace just like a little concealer kind of flat brush. We're going to pop this white champagne on my inner corner just to add some sparkle and shine. So pretty. These formulas are great. I'm planning on filming my ranking video next. So I pulled all my palettes out from this last year that I tried out this year and have them in my little bin down here below me and have them all ranked and ready to go. And I realized there are like almost no ColourPop palettes in there with the exception of one. This was just like the year that I gave ColourPop a break. Normally they're such a go-to for me. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Beautiful. Okay, I do want to add a little bit of smokiness to the outer corner, probably for an everyday look, which is kind of what I would probably be doing today because I'm not doing anything, but because we can, we're going to add a little bit of this dark brown because I want to show you guys what it can do. Take it on this smaller blending brush. This one's from Sydney Grace. And I'm just going to start right at the lash line and kind of feather it up and in. Ooh, it's darker than it looks. In fact, I went up a little higher than I intended to. Really easy to blend though. It does make me a little bit depressed though, thinking about Christmas being over and not, the main reason being that I have to take all the Christmas decorations down because I love having them up and it's so much work to put them up that I'm like, really, I have to take it all down now. At least when you're putting them up, there's a reward at the end. And then I take them down and I think my house looks just really boring and plain. And I'm really sad to take these down. I want to leave them up, but I feel like that would be weird if I left them up in January. But I'm loving the like, lights behind me, the sparkle, the little trees. Oh, man, would it be weird to leave them up in January? Maybe I'll just take the reindeer down. I'm really reaching. I think most people would probably say, no, Mandy, Christmas is over, take them down. There was one year that my mom left her Christmas tree up till February and she put hearts on it in February. Have you guys ever done this? I've heard of people doing this before. My mom did it one time. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> 
but it was just because she didn't want to take her Christmas tree down. I'm sure partly from laziness, but probably more from just, there's just something about having a Christmas tree up that's like, just puts you in a good mood, especially in the winter time when Christmas is over and everyone's, at least where I live, starting to get tired of the cold and the wet and the dreariness, but you have months of it to go. It's just kind of a depressing feeling. <laughs> Okay, eyes are done. Let's add some liner. I'm just gonna take a little bit of my Wet n Wild liner. Where did you go? All right, I'm just gonna take a little bit of this. I need to remember to cancel my dentist appointment. I wanna find a new dentist. My dad was a dentist, but he retired a couple of years ago. So we had to find a new dentist. He told me I had my first cavity that I've ever had in my life. I take really, really good care of my teeth. Then my other kids, I have one, one of my kids had six cavities. He came home in tears. He was so upset and we don't have dental insurance. So we have to pay out of pocket for it. Then my other, I think another one had two. Charlie, he said had four cavities. And then just last week, my oldest son who's home from college for a few weeks, had his dentist appointment and he had two cavities. Like something's fishy about this guy. How all of a sudden after going 15 years without having cavities in our family, everyone suddenly has a ton of cavities that need to be filled. So I want a second opinion. I want to find a new dentist. I'm not gonna say the name of him because I, I have friends that go to him and maybe he's fine. Maybe we do just suddenly have terrible, terrible oral hygiene. I don't think that's true, but I refuse to keep that appointment and get my teeth filled. <laughs> All right, that looks great. Let's add some mascara. I'm going to use this mascara here, the e.l.f. Lash It Loud. I almost included this in my drugstore mascara year-end favorites. I decided just to include the Maybelline because that one has by far been way more used even than this, even than this one, but I do really like this one. My only complaint about it is the brush is very sharp, as in, like it almost feels like needles. You have to be very careful with it. If you're too rough with it, you could really hurt yourself with this brush. But I do really like the mascara. It's not very clumpy. It's really nice and thickening, lengthening, separating, nice and dark. It wears well and it's cheap. I think this thing's only five or six bucks. All right, eyes are pretty much finished, but I do wanna throw on this little pair of lashes. You guys have heard me talk about these before. I don't have the box anymore. It kind of got torn up, but these are the Eyelore by Emma Willis lashes. I'll link them down below. Last time I checked, they still had these on Amazon. These definitely should have been mentioned in my year end, I think drugstore, I, is Eyelore drugstore? I think that they are, but I should have mentioned them in that video because I love these half or quarter set of lashes. They're so, so pretty. I think these were called the Trixilicious Ones. She has a couple different sets on there, but I again will link them down below for you guys I need to go pick up a couple more pairs These are my last set and I have a feeling that they're not gonna last much longer because I have been wearing them a lot lately So I'm gonna pop these on and kind of show you guys the before and after if I can do it on camera Nothing ever goes as well on camera. So I just have a little bit of duo lash glue here. I use the dark lash glue sure the back end is attached and the front end they're so much easier to put on you just kind of set them down that's it look how pretty that is isn't that beautiful all right and there are the eyes complete with lashes don't they look pretty I love these little lashes. I think they're so pretty. They just dress your look up just enough without being too over the top. Let's finish off with the lips. So I'm gonna use my MAC lip pencil. I did not mention this in my favorites video because I do like the Natasha Denona one significantly better than this one. These ones aren't quite as long wearing, but that said, I do like the MAC lip pencils. This is the shade Oak. Actually, no, this is the shade Oak. I had the wrong one. So this is the one I want to use. These are pretty stiff. They take a little bit of time. To, up, to apply, they're not as creamy. They don't go on quite as heavy and pigmented. I'm gonna take a minute and build this up. Fill in just the inner rim a little bit as well. All right, so there it is. Isn't a pretty shade of like peachy, kind of like a peachy brown, but it's not too brown. I wanna add just a little bit of Fluffer Mutter from Wet n Wild, the Cloud Pout, on top of that, just in the center. It's a really pretty combination. And then I wanna add just a tiny bit of gloss on top of that. So let's take a little bit of my lifter gloss in the shade Opal, just in the center, just like so. All right, let's take one final look. I kind of feel like I need more blush. Let's add just a little bit more blush. Maybe I blended too much off with my sponge. A tiny bit more just back here. There we go.
And that, my friends, is gonna do it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys are all doing well. Stay tuned and make sure that you are subscribed because I do have my final video of the year, my 2022 eyeshadow palette ranking video coming up in just a couple of days. So keep an eye out for that. But that's gonna do it for now. Thank you all again. I will see you in my next video. Bye.